Today you're looking at community wellbeing and hopefully by the end of this series you'll see how interconnected this element of wellbeing is with all the other bits and it's very like your body where you've got all the different organs, all the different systems that work together to create one whole healthy person. You've seen in Maslow's pyramid that right at the bottom you've got physical needs, but then you've also got, as you climb up that pyramid, the different ways that human beings relate to each other. You've got the importance of love and belonging, but right at the top of that pyramid, top of the mountain, is the ability to care for other people um, and to respect them and what their needs are and hope to have your needs respected too. Even if we're an introvert, even if we, we prefer to spend more time on our own and that's where we get our energy, we still need each other. We need each other for jobs. We need each other to for our health care, for the systems that support our country um, and our local community. We don't stand alone. And so our well-being, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health doesn't stand alone either. There's a saying that says, a rising tide lifts all ships. When they benefit, I benefit. When I benefit, other people benefit. But it's not easy because as soon as you add another human being into the mix, it starts to get complicated. There's going to be things that are an obstacle for you in developing relationships and trusting people and listening and um, hearing what they've got to say. And with any right that we might have as human beings to have safety, to have health care, to be um, safe from harm from other people, it also comes with some responsibilities as well. And there are obstacles to people um, flourishing in the world, to people having good well-being, that it becomes our responsibility to challenge. It might be systems in our own country, it might be systems globally, but in order for us, for that tide to lift us, for us to reach the mountaintop, we, start to, we need to start to look at what are the hazards to people's lives and what is my responsibility to challenge those hazards or to remove the hazards or not to add to the problem. And that also comes to our closer relationships. How we handle conflict and arguments is absolutely critical to our relationships. You might have friends that you always argue with. You might have people that you often find you've got a difference of opinion. But how you have that difference of opinion can affect the wider community well-being. We can do disagreements really, really well, but it's a skill set that we need to learn. So another skill that we can develop is to have our own boundaries. Um, if skin is the boundary to our body that protects things coming into it that would cause harm, we can also have emotional and mental boundaries um, that look like us saying, no to something that we don't want to do and that being absolutely okay or yes to something if we're willing to do it and and we have the time and the energy um it also looks like turning around and saying to someone the way you're speaking to me is unacceptable and i'm not going to put up with it um, so creating boundaries and saying this is who i am and this is what i'm willing to do willing to accept is absolutely critical to protecting your emotional, your mental, your physical health. And it's also part of having good relationships with other people. So one last skill um, is asking questions of the people around us of what they want to find out what their boundaries are, what their needs are. Um, and this is what happened in Malawi where there was loads of flooding every year and the local community was asked, well, what do you need? So eventually from that, they got in architects and they built houses that would withstand the um, really difficult weather systems that come through every year. But not only that, they asked, 
who is going to benefit from these houses? Because not everybody could have one because it, money was limited, but the community then chose who would benefit most if the if one person benefiting rises the tide for everyone it meant that they all benefited even though they didn't all get a house so i hope you can see that with all of these skills with all of these different elements of what it is that makes us human and helps us to live our best life that it's all interconnected you living your best life helps me live my best life, helps them over there, whoever they might be, live their best life. So as you continue looking at the development goals and different types of well-being, I hope you remember to link those in, that they don't stand alone. It's all connected.